If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. The question notes that the collision between the alpha particle and the proton is a head-on or one-dimensional elastic collision. Now, we know that in an elastic collision, the momentum is conserved during the collision, as well as the kinetic energy. Let's first conserve momentum. So on the left-hand side of this conservation of momentum equation, we have the total momentum after the collision, and then on the right side we have the total momentum before the collision. Notice that before the collision, the only particle that was moving was the alpha particle. That means that the initial momentum of the proton actually was zero, so we've omitted it from the initial momentum side of the equation. So the initial momentum of the alpha particle would be the mass of the alpha particle times its initial velocity. And then on the left side for the final momentums, we have the mass of the proton times the velocity of the proton, and then the mass of the alpha particle times the final velocity of the alpha particle. As noted earlier, because the collision was elastic, we also know that the total final kinetic energy is equal to the total initial kinetic energy. On the initial side, we would have one half times the mass of the alpha particle times its initial velocity squared. On the left side, we have one half times the mass of the proton times the velocity of the proton squared. And then we add that to one half times the mass of the alpha particle times the final velocity of the alpha particle squared. Now, it turns out that as long as the collision is both head-on and elastic, then these two equations can be solved simultaneously to derive the following result. We would have the initial velocity of object 1 minus the initial velocity of object 2. Remember that the initial velocity of object 2, or the proton, was 0, so we've included a 0 there, and that would equal negative the difference between the final velocity of object 1 and the final velocity of object 2. Now, deriving this equation from these two involves rather lengthy steps. It turns out that in chapter 6 of the Surway textbook, they derived the equation, <clears throat> which again applies to a head-on elastic collision, using this notation right here. In our problem, instead of saying object 1, we have an alpha particle, and instead of object 2, we have a proton. Otherwise, the result is the same. So again, this result right here is derivable by solving these two equations simultaneously, and the details of that are presented in Chapter 6 of the Surway textbook. Now, we will go ahead and solve this equation for the final velocity of the proton, and to do that, we could perhaps distribute that negative sign. So on the right-hand side, we would have negative V alpha plus V proton. And then we can just add V alpha over to the other side, and that's going to allow us to solve for the final velocity of the proton. We were also told in the question that the mass of the alpha particle is four times the mass of the proton. So symbolically, we can say that M alpha is equal to 4 m proton. We're going to make a couple of substitutions into the momentum equation. This expression right here for the velocity of the proton is going to be substituted in right here. And then the expression for the mass of the alpha particle will be substituted in both here as well as here. We can see that a factor of mp appears in all terms. So if we divide all terms by mp, it's going to cancel out of the equation. We will combine these like terms here. So 1 v alpha plus 4 v alpha makes 5 v alpha. We can then subtract this 1 v naught over to the right hand side. And then divide both sides of the equation by 5, we can see that the final velocity of the alpha particle will be 3 fifths of its initial velocity. We could then take that result and plug it into the equation that we had developed earlier in terms of the velocities. So we could see the velocity of the proton is equal to v naught plus 3 fifths v naught, which of course is going to be 8 fifths v naught. So now we have the 
we'll put the VP over here. Now we have the velocity of the proton in terms of the initial velocity of the alpha particle, and we have the velocity of the alpha particle in terms of the initial velocity of the alpha particle. Now if we take these two equations and divide them, we could see that VP over V alpha would equal, now let's be careful here, if we divide the two equations, the V naughts will cancel. 8 fifths divided by 3 fifths is going to be 8 thirds. We'll cross multiply so that we have 8 times V alpha is equal to 3 times the velocity of the proton. Divide both sides by 8 and we can see that the final velocity of the alpha particle is 3 eighths the final velocity of the proton. Now from our current studies of this chapter we know that when a charged particle moves into a magnetic field then it's going to move in a circular fashion and the radius of that circle is equal to the expression given on the right hand side. We could apply that expression to determine the radius of the proton. So we'll call the radius of the proton uppercase R and that would equal the mass of the proton times the final velocity of the proton divided by its charge now the charge of a proton is going to be 1E and then that will be times the magnetic field. For the alpha particle we could say that its radius would equal its mass times its final velocity divided by its charge. Now the charge on an alpha particle is stated to be twice that of the proton so it would actually be 2E and then that would be multiplied by the magnetic field. Now we're going to make a couple of substitutions. Let's remember that the mass of the alpha particle is equivalent to four times the mass of the proton. And then we had solved for the final velocity of the alpha particle in terms of the final velocity of the proton right here. So we'll make a substitution for V alpha as well. And then again on the bottom we have two times EB. Now if you were to pick up your calculator and multiply 4 and 3 eighths and then divide that result by 2, you would get 0.75 or 3 fourths. So we'll write 3 fourths out here in the front and again that was derived by multiplying the 4 by 3 eighths and then dividing by 2. What's left over is the mass of the proton times the velocity of the proton divided by E times B. Now if you look carefully this quantity with all of the variables in it is identical to this quantity right here. You might want to pause the video and check that for yourself. So we can make one final substitution whereby that quantity can be replaced with capital R since they are equivalent. So we'll come in here and we will replace this quantity with an uppercase R. And by doing so, we can finally see that the radius of the alpha particle's trajectory is three-fourths of the radius of the proton's trajectory.